Last we left off, we were in the Mirage Tower or the Ancients Tower, and this place was whooping my ass. There was uh, a clear difference between my equipment level and the enemy's level. They were one-shotting me, one shot killing me. Uh, every single attack was taking my break gauge down to nothing. So spent some time grinding and seems like we're sort of in the stretch, the end stretch. Because the Mirage Tower was supposed to be like the testament to the Lufinians, the Sky People, the people that built all this advanced technology and disappeared. It was like a testament to their existence. So let's let's do this. I managed to also unlock all the other advanced classes for the other characters. So Neon now is a Runic Knight, better than a Red Mage, and Sophia is a Sage. Actually, she casts Haste, Protect Shell way more often. All right, this shouldn't be. Too terrible. Hoo-yah, hoo Okay, yeah, you're breaking down way fast. Okay. Weird little Dark Stalkers thing. Perfect. All right, we are properly leveled. And what's really cool is that our equipment is finally now all affinity appropriate. Ow. Ow, 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 ow. Oh, God. Uh, not at 100%, but, you know, better. Freaking unblockable attacks, man. Freaking unblockable attacks. All right, I'm, I'm screwed up. So as the story is progressing, I've kind of got it figured out. I think the Lufinians were one of the four civilizations uh, from 400 years ago that fell, each one associated with a different crystal. They were associated with the wind crystal. They used to live in the sky. And uh, eventually the wind fiend Tiamat banished them down to earth. So, I think Sid was also one of the Lufinians, too. He's the guy that invented the airships. I think what they did was that they were trying to... Every room looks the same to me. Like, Easy take control of Cornelia. Pay attention. And they differences. sent Jack. Jack's from a realm called Paradise. It's a Lufinian realm called Paradise. Literally Paradise. He's an agent. And they sent him... They gave him the Dark Crystal in order to erase his memory so he won't have any emotions. And so, therefore, he's very focused on his mission. Seems like every single character has cracked at some point. They've regained, like, some memories of their, their, the truth, their previous life. And we've seen echoes of previous loops, too, with every single character, except Jack. I think Jack's going to be the final one to snap completely. Can I get you to hold still for a moment? No! Oh, God. Oh, God. Oh, no. No huggy. No huggy. I should be good. Oh, God, freaking two Eponas. Got to get down. One, two. Ow, 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 ow. Dude. Your mission isn't over yet, that was so sudden. Come on. Gotta be patient. Gotta be patient. I know it's a fast-paced combat system, and it's very tempting to want to just charge in there and kick the crap out of everything, but yes, at times you do have to be patient. Gotta wait. Gotta wait it out. Soul style. I think it's really the skills. Yeah, the axes are super, super powerful. Um, the only problem, though, is that, I guess, is that it requires more timing. As I've discovered from some of the most powerful attacks in this game, it's, it's super powerful, except you have to time everything so, so precisely. Like with Zantetsu Ken. Well, it's the timing and specifically breaking down their gauges. Breaking down their gauges is everything. Yeah, but timing is everything. If you can get Zentetsuken off, uh, some of the earlier bosses like die within like four hits. But the problem is that, especially like Merolith, they move so fast, so fast, that you have to get that in that opportune time to attack. That's what's so interesting about this game, is that it does have the Souls type of uh, fighting rhythm. You know, shields, dodge, and then attack. Find the right moment to attack. You can't just, like, jump right in. Because the enemies will often, like, combo at the most uh, inappropriate time. But it has, like, the fast pace action combat that I expect more from, like, uh, Bloodborne. 
it's weird, like, you're fast, but the enemies are also super fast, and when you get into a room with five enemies, they all aggro you, you at once, uh, it super sucks. You can die so fast. So fast! Uh, regardless of your equipment. And I've also noticed that this resonant it's ability you, that gets the party members to aggro, I don't know why there's no option to just keep that on all the time. Because I've never had a situation where I wanted that turned off. The worst... The worst combat situations have been where... I've been in a, a room of five guys, they hit me all at once, they take no aggro from my party members. Which is why I feel like the multiplayer mode is sufficiently better, at least in execution. However, as you're getting more abilities, your party members, the AI party members, are getting quite good too. Merilith, multiple times on hard, uh, higher item level missions, didn't matter what I already knew. Yeah, the... Um, it's just that she moves so fast. It's weird. Like, the, the difficulty progression in this game is super weird. I feel like some of the regular enemies are harder than the bosses. And some of the earlier bosses are way harder than the later bosses. Kraken was a pushover. I killed that guy in my first try. Whereas Merilith... Um, Merilith took me, like, four tries. And Lick took me eight or ten tries. So, maybe chalk it up to item level or what class you prefer. What abilities you have equipped. But I think there's a, like, a dead zone in this game. Like, the first 30 or 35 levels, where you're not... The game is super hard, it's the same difficulty, but you don't have the, the item levels or the abilities to carefully mitigate that. But once you get to level, like, 50 or 60, when you get more abilities, then, like, the bosses are... I guess they're a little bit harder, depending on how fast they are, but then the difficulty curve drops off by quite a bit. Weirdly enough, the fast enemies in this game that are so dangerous, not the strongest enemies. Because it's sort of like on hardcore mode in Resident Evil 2 Remake, where every single attack will more or less take you down to danger. It's sort of like that here. Almost every single attack will take off crap tons of health, regardless of if it's done by a fast enemy or a strong enemy. Now certainly like the ogres, they can take off more health, but the FPS damage from bats is, uh, I'd argue, way, way harder to deal with. But as I said before, I don't think there's any jank in this game. Controls are very responsive, and they do what they promise to do. So I don't ever feel like I'm con I'm fighting the controls. Okay, opportune moment to get in. Wow, I wish they would do that more often. It's like sometimes my AI party members, they do like the most perfect thing. And I wish they would do that more often. Which they don't. Become pushovers once you get the gear that gives you certain job affinities, which can pretty much break the game. I didn't realize how important the job affinity was until much later. That was my fault. But I hope at some point you do get enough affinity per equipment that allows you to get like the 400% bonus of each class within one class. Because the 400% bonus is where it's at for each of these classes. And being able to mix and match that would be great. The best kind of difficulty is where it's difficult, but it's satisfying. Meaning that it's not just enemies hitting for crap tons of damage and then you just die and like, what the fuck? That's just artificial. But that it's progressively harder and the enemy's smarter. Maybe some... Maybe some... Some more abilities. And they are smarter strategically. That's asking for a lot, though. I think I am Chaos. I think that explains a lot, actually. I think Jack, the, the knight you saw at the beginning, Garland, um, is Jack. Because we've seen already evidence of previous loops, seeing ourselves in previous loops. There's like a loop of time, and every time it resets, we forget what happens in the previous loop. We saw it with Sophia, we saw it with Neon, we saw it with Jed and Ash. We're sort of seeing it with, with Jack, and that explains a lot uh, as far as their place within the Lufinian scheme. It seems like the Lufinians are using Jack as like a guinea pig to, to come back here and then finish the war with Cornelia, like take over Cornelia in the form of chaos. Jack is slowly figuring everything out. I think that Astos, that elf, is like a fake villain. He appears to be a villain now, but I think he's really on our side. Probably he'll either help us get our memories back, or he's going to help us uh, do something with the Dark Crystal that's going to help us to 
ultimately overthrow the Lufinians and their control over us. This is a glass cannon fight. One, two! No, no! Okay, okay, all right. See, that could have ended terribly right there. Like I said before, the story in this game is not like some lame, stupid, you know, single-minded thing. It's got a great plot twist. And I think that the characters on a design level, not visual design, but like on a design character level are actually quite good. It's just that the execution isn't 100% all there, but I actually do enjoy Jack's character far more than people give him credit for. I mean, setting aside all the chaos memes, he's all about the mission and like nothing else getting in the way, but it's not like he's toxic with his comrades. He actually wants their help. It's just that he's very single-minded. Uh, for reasons that I think are going to become clear very soon. He's more like just kind of uh, obsessive. I'm, I'm not sure if it's angsty. Like other Final Fantasy protagonists have been like angsty, like depression, depressed angsty, for lack of a better word. Like they're teenagers with depression angst. But Jack is, he's honest. I don't see very much pretension in him. Like sure, Cloud was the same way. I mean, he... He was like, uh, yeah, you know, job's a job. Like, you know, I'm just here for uh, to get the job done. But you can tell there was a pretense with him. Same with Squall. But not with Jack. He seems like very earnestly wants to just kill this thing. Get the job done. And he embraces his comrades. You know? He embraces his comrades' help. You want to kill Chaos too? Great. We're all on board. The advanced classes are not necessarily better than the earlier classes. Right? It gives utility and purpose to every single class. So it's not like once you get the advanced classes, you just toss the older classes aside and that's it. Oh god, I need a mini-map. This place is so huge. I've been through here. Just a visual effect. The katana has a second stance, actually. This stance. -ha 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 -ha. Probably good for breaking gauges, but uh, does crap damage. It's situationally good. If you can, yeah, if you can knock down the enemies, like stagger them, and then get them into a corner, you can use that sentient stance to knock down their break gauge super fast. Uh, and I'm now prioritizing a lot of abilities around that. Just knocking down the enemy's gauge super fast. Charge in there and just Zantetsu get the hell out of this it's thing. I only got one left. Ready? Ready? Let's do this shit! One, two, boom! Oh, thank God. Thank God. Seat of Calamity. This looks like the... the stairway to Dracula. Oh, the Iron Brains Giant? The Met Iron Giant? What? Oh shit, it, it obeys me. That's a huge fucking sword. You wanna play? Play with us. It's How fast are you though? Sophia. Hey, you're slow. That's great. That's great. Like, I'm, I'm doing jack shit. Okay. Get in, get in, get in. One, two, boom! One, two, boom! Oh god, this guy's dying so hard. God damn it! Woo! What? Three hit combo! One, two, savage. Uh, that probably isn't good. That was a tank buster. Two. Oh god. Yeah, he hits for super hard damage, is the main thing. But he's not smart. He's actually quite slow and kind of stupid. I'm super nervous getting close, man. When it does that, um, Savage Blade is a perfect time to attack because it sticks its sword into the ground. I'll take that. Thank you. Come on. Give me some Hadouken. Give me some Hadouken. One. Two. Missed. I freaking missed with Zantetsuken. What the hell, man? I'm literally doing almost nothing. My team members are doing everything. Ow, ow, ow. No, 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 no grabby, no grabby. Shit, no! Got a reviver, it's worth it. Uh, they distract the boss uh, by quite a bit. Okay, come on, come on. Finishing move, finishing move. And you're done. I love this, man. A custom animation for every single death. Your memories will be stored in this device. Be sure to bring it back. They use this Understood. thing to deprive him of his memories. Be aware that storage space is limited. When that limit is exceeded, 
You must cease your activities and await extraction. From where? It varies. Just contact Astos when you're ready for pickup. I think Astos was trying to counter the Luthinians and they were trying to eliminate him. So this is why I do like Jack as a protagonist. Uh, he's not angsty and broody the way that other Final Fantasy protagonists have been. I mean, even uh, Lightning and Noctis weren't immune to this. Dealing with like a lot of internal problems is, I guess, the thing. Um, Jack is now coming into conflict with an existential crisis, but that's more of like a, a situation of circumstance. More so than him starting off as, a, well, my dad abandoned me and therefore I'm going to distance myself from my, uh, my uh, allies. Or like what Lightning was going through with uh, her father and her surrogate uh, brother helping her to become like a better sister to her own real sister. Nothing like that. Uh, he's not like a shithead the way that Cloud and Squall were initially, nor was he like dealing with some lack of friends issue like Zidane. He's just a guy that wants to single-mindedly kill this thing and then he welcomes all of his comrades on board to do the same thing. And now it turns out that he's being used or he realizes he's being used. But he's not, he's not falling into like the teenage angst depression, which is what I like. He's also, I think like in his, what, mid 20s or late 20s, maybe even early 30s, which is a stark contrast from the under 22 <laughs> Final Fantasy protagonist that we've had. Uh, yeah, I really respect this guy. He's so out of place, but in a good way. So all of them were steadily remembering things and it bothered them, even uh, Naomi over here. But then... Let's hear what Astos has to say. That's it was weird we that all this time, as everyone was kind of breaking apart, even Sophia to a degree, Jack has been the one thing that's held them all together because he was just so single-minded. So in a way, his meme, his chaos meme, was what held them all together. And now he's starting to crack. Using us for your own ends? Evans, no. You forget this is simply what you wanted from me. That is true. Now, I have work to do. This so is what we wanted. If you'll excuse me. <sighs> All right, Alucard. Forget him. We're leaving. He's very Kratos-like. All of his dialogue is like noun, verb, subject, predicate, or something, you know? Like, we're leaving. Details now. Or I mad. I was actually somewhat concerned. And I don't think that a Final Fantasy game would ever do this. That Jack's attitude would lead to, like, this game being about, like, toxic masculinity. Like, you know, we're, we drink beer. We, we belch. We, uh, you know, we get mad for its own sake. You know, we men, aren't we? We men, aren't we? But no, it's not like that. Jack isn't, like, an asshole for its own sake. He's just very misunderstood i guess <laughs> and determined remembering home the mission is now available oh god level 100 yeah the game is permanently designing me to be under leveled at times hmm. we're level we're 10 levels under so this place can probably whoop me really fast i probably will get equipment that stat wise is better it'll allow me to survive longer but it won't give me the affinity i want but i'm gonna have to bite the bullet yeah the thing is that before I got more equipment, but stat-wise it was good. But then the affinity was crap. It didn't like give me the over 400% bonus I wanted. So I didn't equip the new stuff because I wanted to keep the affinity bonuses. Problem was though, the equipment I had was so under-leveled that I got one-shotted by almost every enemy. Therefore, I'm going to have to bite the bullet and just like optimize for stats for every single piece of equipment and then do the whole thing all over again. Get all the affinity bonuses... And that's the one thing I don't like about this game, is the, the equipment management. They give you so much equipment, and it seems like there's like a healthy balance you want of what affinity bonuses go with the equipment, but you can't really do that because every single level forces you to essentially upgrade, and it's all based on RNG. That feeling's gone. My drive, my purpose, it's not there anymore. Someone took away his desire to kill Chaos? I think that makes sense. Now, the prophecy was for four warriors of light. If there are five of us, then one of us must be an imposter or we're all imposters. 
what we saw at the beginning in the opening cutscene of uh, Garland, Chaos, taking away Princess Sarah, I think that's Jack. It's a previous version of him. A previous time-looped version of him. And so every single time the loop resets, he forgets everything. This is very Shinra-like. Shinra HQ, huh? Like with the black and the gold? And the greenish Mako? Ow! Oh, what the fuck? All right, this is more doable than that Mirage Tower. We were severely underleveled. Yeah, the top parts, the upper floors in the Shinra uh, building in Final Fantasy VII Remake remind me a lot of Final Fantasy XV. I would really prefer to keep the affinity. Ooh. Oh, it's worse. Oh, this thing? Ah, uh, I'm a dumbass. Ow! Oh, it's got, it's got health. Oh, this will destroy the barrier. Is generating the barrier. Right, I got one Zantetsuken for a quick kill. However, they can quickly kill me too. I don't like the look of this room. If I grab this, will it make me a jack sandwich? Four of you. All right, move in. And quick, 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 quick. One, two, boom. No, we don't. Now that our crystals won't protect us from the mist, your liability. You depended on yours to keep you safe. In oh. other words, you'll be forced to do your favorite thing. Reminisce. Uh oh. Well, it was nice knowing you, Jack. Shut up. My own goddamn party members are trolling me! God damn it! Unlocking those two energy barriers is a checkpoint. So if I save this, I'm not gonna have to do it all over again. The planet bleeds green, like you me bleed red. The hell you think's gonna happen, huh? When it's all gone. Sorry. Is this going to trap me inside a cage with a grater? Uh, purple doors now. Wait, didn't I destroy the red doors? Knock them down, knock them down, knock them down, knock them down. Don't let them get back up. Oh no, oh no. No! You're going to be a problem. Dude! Jesus! One bitch-ass bat. That's all it takes. Lavinian Log, over the course of countless experiments, we have determined that the very fact of human existence is a source of cows. Phenomena. Though we had hoped to bring all native organisms with us into our glorious future, I strongly urge the removal of any life forms that prove unmanageable. Unmanageable. With seemingly perfect timing, the latest proposal from our extraplanar collaborator seems to be in line with this suggestion and official consideration for enacting both ideas in tandem is in progress. I hate these freaking things. One, two, boom! Ow, I couldn't even get it off. Dude, one hit? One hit? Damn it, damn it. No, 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 leave me alone. Ow. Fuck. Two of those horses, man. Screw this shit, come on. What? I blocked. Dude, they're knocking out my, my party members too. All right, that gets rid of the red barrier. And this gets rid of. I'm a dumbass, all right? And then over here, some bogeys we skipped. Ooh, this is open now. I will leave you there to be tormented for the rest of your life. I have enough for one Zantetsuken, so... Ready? One, it's two, three, severe. fuck it! Come on, come on! Got it! I got it. Yeah, Ash is totally Zell in this game. Sophia. <laughs> Sophia is Quistus, and Neon is Selfie. Jack not quite Squall. I mean, he's Squall without the the teenage brooding angst. I don't care about any of that crap. If it's not chaos, killing chaos, or light and dark, who cares, right? Wrong. All of that's just background noise. All I care about is finding something about? to replace that purpose you lost. You got it. I need a name something to kill. I'm nothing without a battle to fight. I wouldn't say that. It's a matter of principle. You wouldn't understand. Wow, he is weirdly forthcoming and honest. Like, you can't imagine any other character, maybe with the exception of Zidane, just openly saying, yeah, like, I don't feel whole without a purpose. He'll tell you just straight up, like, this is what's bothering me. It'll take you at least, what, 60% of the game before you'll know anything like that from any other Final Fantasy character? Protagonist, especially? But no, man, Jack almost wears his heart on his sleeve. He's a very simple guy. I like it. 
And he's been very consistent, hasn't he? He's had this one drive to do this one thing, and then the moment he lost it, I need something else to replace the drive. Maybe that's it. It just seems like the AI is smarter because they have more abilities. And they have more to work from. Just, I don't trust you, man. I don't trust you with a 10-foot fucking pole. Uh -huh. Okay. Playing this like a goddamn Resident Evil game. Like, scoping the corners and shit. This has got to be a trap, right? It's like they're at the same level that I am, but somehow they're able to resist these attacks better than I can. Oh, no. What attack? Oh, God. Dude, dude, dude. They hit me with one attack. And then they hit me with multiple attacks simultaneously. Are you going to be best and follow me? You are. Oh, God. You're actually following me. You're actually following me. You're actually following me. All right, though, the problem is that I got to face a freaking ogre. That's easily 10 levels ahead of me with not enough MP for a Zantetsukin. Okay, both of you, attack while I find the right moment. There we go. And it did almost nothing. Holy God. I'll destroy this thing. Yeah, this is a very dangerous thing over here. This is my job. Oh, you're done? I was just about to execute my finishing move. But since you did already, then I guess I'm, I'm all good. Teamwork. That's how it works. So that's yeah. the purple thing. Jack, it's fine if you're rattled. Just stay on point. Remember, we got your back. <sighs> so I do like that the party members care about you, but also Jack does care about his party members. He does. He does go out of his way to help them. Of course, that's because they're all in service of fighting chaos. But still, a common purpose makes for great friends. <laughs> I think only near Automata has been able to make like repetitive, like reusing assets in a level. Very interesting. It's one of the few exceptions. Anything better? Nope. Anything better? Yes. Oh, baby. Oh, baby. Oh, shit. Lost my helmet. Maybe how easy, easily the enemy is able to break you down isn't just like raw stats, but also the weapon level, like the actual level itself. Oh, please, no. Oh, this is pretty damn badass. Is it the Arboretum? This is the... What level is it? Level... What floor is it on the Shinra building? The giant plant? The last tree in Migdar? This level design is very Resident Evil-y, kind of Parasite-ish. Eve-ish. All right, uh, how many right. shitheads am I dealing right. with here? One... Two... Three... Four... Five... Six? Six? It's okay, you two go in first. And then I'll come in at the last moment. Oh, no. Oh, it follows me. I can kill them if I can just get a moment in. One, two. I'm paralyzed. No. Oh, no. Dark wings. Dark wings. Dark wings. All right. There we go. Spiders I can deal with. Harpies, less so. Uh, can I break this thing? I'm, I'm out of here. Oh, damn it. Jeez, man. All right. That could have been far worse. That really could have been far, far worse. Just from experience. He's gonna keep sniping me. Oh, he's he's a free MP deposit though. Take that. Okay. Now I'll deal with all of you. Got here. One. Two. You're done. What the It takes just one hit. Just takes one hit. Okay, glass cannon fight. Excuse me. Another blight on the land. One, two. That was worth it. Oh god, it goes on forever. Hall of the Chosen Ones. This sounds like uh, the Hall of Judgment here. Are these uh, armaduras gonna come to life? Try to chop my head off? One, two. Okay, number one. And. Oh, there's another one. Perfect. Alright. That one. There's three of them. Is Zantetsuken broken? Um, arguably in certain situations, sure. But I would argue that since the enemies feel somewhat broken too, at times it kind of balances itself out. Do I like them like 
conceptually, or do I like fighting them? I don't like fighting them. Well, they're an, they're an interesting case, actually, in th for this game, because they either kill you super quickly, or you kill them super quickly. Like, super quickly. You can say that about a lot of enemies in this game, where it feels like a glass cannon fight. Within the first 10 seconds, you know if you're going to beat them, or they're going to beat you. Tonberries are like the extreme version of that. Within the first 10 seconds, you know if you're screwed, or if the Tonberry's going to die. I've rarely had a, a fight with a Tonberry in this game where it was a battle of attrition. You're chipping off little pieces of health at a time. It's not like that. Uh, you either get in the attack super hard and super fast, or it gets in its attacks super hard and super fast, and you're both dead. I like their design, though, and I like the concept of the Tonberry. How it's this very innocuous thing that's super terrifying. And that's what I like about Final Fantasy's enemies, the villains, the original Amano art that made them so kind of Cthulhu fantasy terrifying. You know, weird behemoths and airmans and weird squid creatures, pisco demons with tentacles and shit. It's, it's not, I don't know if it's quite as, as uh, Cthulhu-like or Lovecraftian as like Bloodborne, but it allows for that. And it allows for crazy, goofy things like the Cactuar and the Tonberry. You know, it's, it's not afraid to have fun, I guess, is how I would sum up Final Fantasy's enemy designs. This is somewhat reminiscent is of the first Chaos dungeon we faced, except it's more Cathedral-like, more Castlevania-like. Lemons of Innocence? It's a freaking behemoth with bat wings! How do I know this thing's name? Okay, distracted. One, two. Yeah, it's got Comet and like a lot of higher level spells. Lightning. Okay, it's got lightning. It's got meteor. It's got flare probably. I can absorb it. Oh shit! Usually a meteor is unblockable. It's up to you, Sophia. All right, half health. First try. What's left? Like the bottom half of your body? It hits in a pillar. Oh my god, my pupils! I can't see shit. One, two. Three? Uh-oh. Oh, no, no, no. Oh, no, oh, no. Oh, shoot. What? Oh, good God. What the hell was that? One, two. Almost got you. Almost got you. Wow. That was a glass cannon fight. That was a total glass cannon fight. Glass behemoth fight. I love it. That will never get old. That will never get old. Hey, you see what I mean? Like, certain boss fights later in the game are way easier than the early ones. How many times have I been here? And I think Sophia using her high level sage spells also helps with the aggro. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just another one of their gifts. It's infectious. Uh, what the hell? Lufenian bats? Wait! Right. Just charged into a weird portal left behind by bats. He hasn't really changed that much as a character. Sure, he's learned more about himself, but I don't think Jack has fundamentally changed as a character. So it's not like Squall breaking down and then becoming a completely different character, it seems, like midway when Renoa got knocked out, or even Cloud. Moving on, uh, the suffering of fools. That would be us, the fools. This place is screwed up, man. I like the level design, the concept art. I'm sorry. Yeah, the concept art of these places. Not necessarily the, the levels themselves, but the concept art is quite great. It's like this game, it promised so little in the, the trailer and it over-delivered. Yeah, it's like the... Why? The, um, what is it? What are they trying The floating to continent or something in FF6. And where, we have to push the three statues where did this into alignment. Where desperate urge to eradicate chaos come from? Even now, as his mind is slowly coming apart, it doesn't matter. He defaults to <laughs> just smash shit. Ask questions later. Can we fall off? Can we die? All right. See, it's, it's easier when every single attack will stagger the enemy a little bit. Unlike the skeletons or those horses where... Is this going to hurt? Oh. Where one attack doesn't really stagger them, and therefore it leaves you open when your animation locked with combos. Oh, God. Oh, God. Oh, God. Oh, God. I'm out of here. Your twister versus mine, man. Oh, God. 
Remember, switch to Sage whenever I need to use a potion because it'll restore my MP as well. Now, question is, are you going to attack me the moment I ascend this rope? Oh, that was close. That was very close. Let's keep going. What's down here? Uh, down there's death. Oh no, unblockable, unblockable! Oh no, 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 no! That's, that's some bullshit. He one, two, three'd me. One hit took off my entire gauge and then he just body slammed me. The most dangerous enemies are the ones that do status effects like Marlboros and shit. Okay, knock you back a little bit. Oh, god damn it! Yeah, no! My gauge, man, my gauge, my gauge, my gauge! It's like the moment your gauge breaks, you're fucked. It goes the same for the enemy, but yes, you too. The moment your gauge breaks, you're screwed. You're super screwed. Especially if the enemy can follow up with attacks or you're surrounded. Like in other games where you have like AI NPCs that help you, I don't think they're strong enough to actually kill the enemies themselves, right? They help you, but you're the one that has to do the bulk of the work. That's all Whereas right. here, it we seems like I can sometimes just time. pass off the bulk of the combat to them. For the most part, I can't fault the NPCs, or the, I'm sorry, the AI, because they are doing their job. Oh, god damn it. Okay, last can fight. It's you two distract this bitch. All right. All right. Okay, okay. No, 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 no. Leave me alone, leave me alone. One, two. Oh no, it's not enough. It's not enough. Oh, it's bullshit. It's bullshit. I'm se I'm severely under leveled. I am severely under leveled in equipment. Oh yeah, there we go. Yeah, the moment I buffed up my my sword at least, then yeah, this is this is a joke. I see some flan bogies. We're back to the Jesus Causeway. Let's save that. This is the beginning. We went this way the first time. Let's go this way. Uh, I'm not dealing with you. Oh, traps, traps. Ow. All right, I gotta get rid of one of you. One of you has to die. The Pisco Demon is a ground creature, so maybe that's a little bit easier, but it's got some crazy... Oh, no. Ow. Healing? Healing? Dude! I'm pushing down. One, two, there we go. The fuck? Motherfucker hit me with one spell and it FPS me down to nothing. Now I don't like the way that it forces you to constantly equip new stuff that it gives you and then like all the work you spent Upgrading your previous equipment is now like gone. Like you have to do it all over again. And so I'm really reluctant to spend too much time upgrading this equipment and making it better because I'll just get like level 110 equipment in the next level and then 120 level equipment in the next level. And it, it just seems kind of stupid. Okay, Pisco Demon is no joke. That thing can one shot me. It's a Dude, it feels That's like sometimes good. my party members are invincible. <laughs> they dodge every attack so perfectly. The outline of the proposal made by our collaborator is as follows. After the strangers deal with the fiends, which continue to defeat our efforts to control them, we will increase darkness levels until local negative energy reaches its maximum threshold. Okay. Though this may cause all of humanity to transform into monsters that will A, save us time as they kill each other, B, lower the difficulty of reducing total darkness. And C, simplify the human problem. If all humans are monsters, the question of whether we should just exterminate them is a foregone conclusion. In conclusion, once the strangers have destroyed the fiends, we will recover our agents and initiate the above proposal. Note that this document has been shared with Astos. He knows about it, meaning that we've been doing their bidding. And so... We're not really the Warriors of Light saving this world. If anything, we're the Warriors of Light destroying this world. I guess depending on whose point of view you're looking at it from. And if Astos knows this, then either he has decided to rebel, and that's why that Iron Giant was trying to kill him, uh, or he's possibly even using the situation to his own benefit. Oh, 
Okay. Now I got an easy way back. Are we gonna go back nice. or what? Where's back? I don't recognize this place. We'll Not sure how resistant these flan are to Zantus again. Quick. One, Four. two. Okay. Flan princess. Oh, your majesty. I freaking hate this thing. I hate this thing more than anything. The flying enemies that hit you with tons of attacks are just so annoying. This thing's gotta die. This thing's gotta die like super fast. I can't risk it. That thing being around makes everything like 10 times harder. Keep knocking it down. Keep knocking it down. Don't let it get back up. Don't let it get back up. There's two of them. Oh, oh, oh. Get rid of it. Get rid of it. Sweet God. Where's the other one? Where's the other one? Can't see shit. Oh no. You're after me. You're after me. Come on. What? What? Oh no! Jesus, dude. It's like so many enemies hitting you simultaneously. Let's be quick. See, like hard on, mode, at times it feels satisfying, but other times it feels cheap. As in, like it just feels like the enemies are doing crap tons of damage. This will take us back to the starting point. Yes, it does. The Jester, uh-huh, it's very cute. I wonder who the boss of this place is. Where's the freaking statue? Just, where's the freaking statue? Just cut all the bullshit and just kill that thing. Traps! Oh, man. Okay, I can skip all of you, right? Final location would be the... That cave blocked off by that purple energy. So... Now that we destroyed the three statues, according to game logic, right? I wonder if there's a boss battle. Oh, that's a weird door. I wonder if there's a boss battle. Light and darkness are in perfect balance, thanks to your noble efforts. Tell us who you are. Guess. I'm not in the mood for games. What plot twist you can throw at me now? Mm. Alufenian? Probably. No. Not one of them. I only want one thing from you, Astos. Huh? I want you to give me a reason to live. An enemy to fight. Damn. Can you do that? Wow! I've lived too long. You see, an eternity of regret. My heart's full of enough sadness, resentment, hatred, and rage to fill an ocean. I might as well be a dark crystal myself. Jack, I ask you one more time. Who am I? Oh, you've become what? What the? What? Oh. Oh! Take it from here, Shit! Alright. So, I need him to be, like, staggered slightly? Oh, no. And that... Damn. Chaos has given Asos incredible power, but the darkness in him can be purged through pain. Hurt him to weaken him, open him up to further attacks, okay? Is a brilliant and powerful wizard, but not exceptionally talented when it comes to fisticuffs. He's particularly weak against Jack's attacks when the darkness in him is drawn back and can be easily staggered. Use this opportunity to deliver a lot of damage. So he hates melee. This is bullshit, dude. You you do way too much damage. Hammer time, babe. Oh, God. One, two, three. Thank you. Ow. Dude. It's just that every single attack he does, if it lands, it hurts for crap tons of damage. You are... Dude, this is some bullshit, dude. Every attack of his, it can't land. If it lands, I'm screwed. Like, this is what I'm talking about, where the difficulty feels cheap. It feels like you're not allowed to take one hit. The enemies are designed to just hit for crap tons of damage. That's not necessarily more satisfying. That's just cheap. It moves so fast. What? I... It's so hard to dodge that attack. No, the, the window of time is just too unforgiving. Remember, I equipped maximum stats for the equipment that was given to me in this level. Like, I hate fights like that. I hate fights where enemies just do crap tons of damage. And, like, you're dead. See, it's weird because my AI party members, they can apparently take, like, a lot more damage than I can. 
that. That bullshit. Like, I'm spending so much time just preparing for that. Like, what the hell? He's, like, 75% health already? From me doing nothing? But running around? Ow. Fuck. Like that. What the hell is that? One hit from anything means that it doesn't encourage you to actually be strategic with this guy. It's like, just stand back and do nothing. What the hell? My party members did, like, 90% of the work. That was a super weird fight. Oh, it's not over. What? Dude, I don't like that. Where... Like, the fight starts and immediately the boss hits you without any warning. What? I have no... I have no window to attack. Like, I'm just constantly telling my party members to aggro. Because, like, why else would I want them to not aggro? Because I'm afraid to attack you, man. The moment I attack you, you do some bullshit counter. And somehow my party members are able to... To weather all those attacks when I can't. Like, one hit will fucking screw me. Bitch is almost dead. That was dumb. Man, that wasn't challenging at all. Some of the boss fights here... It just feels like they're... They're fundamentally flawed in terms of the design. I don't think they're designed very well. On hard mode. They're designed to just hit for crap tons of damage, and so you're just afraid to ever get close. And then you just use your party resonances to aggro them. And then it turns out they end up doing 95% of the work. Device. I know I must have asked this a dozen times before, but... Oh. Why do we have to forget? Simple. To ensure our glorious future. <laughs> it's like they took these characters out of Nier Automata. And then took Jack out of... Some alt Organic version of Kingdom Hearts. Organic unit Astos at your service. Thanks to the benevolence and technology of your people, a simple Cornelian elf like me was reborn to aid your glorious cause. He was born in a realm of Lufenia. But he's not... Please don't think of me as a friend or comrade. He's not like one of the high-born Lufinians. My kind are mere bio-organisms, mass-produced to serve. Oh, is Truly, Jack like a robot? I say this out of concern for your well-being. In the past, strangers died for us, sacrificing themselves out of a misguided sense of justice. <laughs> Pretty stupid of them. Yeah, yeah. I'm just glad you're okay. <clears throat> Pretty stupid of you. He's crossing the barrier that Stranger was never meant to cross. I can argue with you on that. Next time we meet, guide us. Show us the way. I don't care how you do it. So he's setting up his own kind of time loop. He forgets everything, of course, but then he's setting it up in a way that allows Astos to help him remember to overthrow the Lufinians. The preparations are complete. Good luck and be careful. This could really hey, work as a full-fledged, like, mainline Final Fantasy story, I think. Huh? I just Don't think the the whole chaos meme thing distracted it's people from of what I want. potentially it's how good it is. Against the rules. Then I'll change them. I'll fight for you. Don't get my hopes up. I promise you, I won't forget. Next time. But he did. I will bring you back. The fist bump is the the emotional thread between all of them. But in terms of characters, these are actually quite good. I don't and the plot twists you. are actually quite good, too. They're the ones erasing your memories. Damn, they turned the Lufinians it's into these like, evil Kryptonians with their kind of I Yorha master plan. That. And yet, I wish I could forgive you. But it's too late. And it's great that even There's as Jack no has a change of heart, in my it's heart not as if his original character really changed. He's still just as determined <laughs> and somewhat single-minded, even if that was flawed at first. They could make it so that it becomes a, a tragic time loop a la Silent Hill where you defeat the the final boss or something and then Chaos the loop repeats itself. Its you forget everything. And emotion become one. Wherever it like he becomes Chaos be and then the whole loop begins all over again and he remembers nothing. There, 
and then the whole game starts all over again, hence New Game Plus. Strangers of Paradise, that sounds like the final level. It, it is the final level, I can't access anything else. All right, we're gonna stop it right there. Weirdly enough, as this game has progressed, I've found more and more issues with the difficulty, but I'm finding uh, more and more merits with the story and the characters. So it's like the opposite. Initially, I thought that the combat was really more polished than it turns out it was, but the story was kind of memeish, and then uh, they both progress in completely different ways. The difficulty is the weirdest thing in this game. I like the the combat, the essence of the combat, being able to swap between different abilities in the classes. I'm hoping that uh, soon enough we'll be able to get 400% affinity for multiple classes. That'll be really, really cool. But the issue though is that on hard mode, the enemies just do like too much artificial amounts of damage. It's designed so that when you get hit one time, it cascades. You lose all of your soul shield and therefore you're knocked out, which leaves the enemy free to hit you with follow-up attacks. And you saw that, right? I equipped the best stat equipment for that level that it gave me and it didn't matter. It still happened. Um, but the weird thing is that your party members, which are meant to be like ancillary and support, are then doing the bulk of the work. They're able to somehow, I'm not sure if they're just designed to be able to withstand more hits and have more potions. Sure, every once in a while they go down and then you just have to resurrect them with one of your own potions. But they just seem far more resilient to the enemy's attacks than me. To where, to the point where it feels like the best way to handle the situation is for you to stand back, do nothing, just turn on the resonance for your party members and let them do all the work. And from that last boss fight, they did like over 95% of the work. I just stood back and just watched for a couple of key attacks because those attacks just one shot me essentially. And same thing with the trash mobs. I feel like some of the trash mobs are even harder than the boss fights. And some of the earlier boss fights are harder than the later ones. And then there's a lopsided, it's like the bosses are this hard initially and then it starts to go down and then somewhat takes a nosedive and then suddenly it just like zoop all the way up again. There's some fundamental design flaw, I think with the bosses and with some of the enemies too, like those mind flares that are able to, to FPS kill you in one hit. Uh, even with my equipment maxed out to the level that that, uh, that specific level has afforded me. See, so that's weird. The soul shield, because normally you're trying to just use it in preparation for an attack, but the problem is that it goes down so fast on hard mode that you have to get the timing window just right, and it takes quite a while for it to restore. But in terms of characters, I think Jack is great. And seriously, not in an ironic way either. I think he is probably one of the more honestly relatable Final Fantasy characters. Yes, take away all the chaos memes and stuff. If you look at this game just in a vacuum, you just start playing the game, you didn't watch any of the trailers, you didn't live inside the, the, the echo chamber of Twitter, he seems like one of the most genuinely earnest of all the Final Fantasy protagonists, like from start to finish. He's consistent, he's direct, um, he's very amenable to his comrades. Like, we're all here to solve a, a problem, to fulfill a mission, and then he does it. From beginning to end, even as he loses his quote-unquote purpose, he loses that purpose, but then his core character is still that, I need something to drive me forward. And if my friends can help me with that, cool, I'm gonna help them out. If my friends, if I can help my friends out, then cool, they'll help me out. You know, it's not like, you notice that in other Final Fantasy games, the protagonists are often quite brooding. They spend a lot of time inside their own heads, dealing with like, emotional complexes and personality defects. And that's the way it starts off at the beginning of the game. And it takes quite a while for them to finally lower their guard. Um, they feel like angsty, depressed teenagers that have to learn to grow up and trust the people around them. And that's usually where the, uh, the arc happens, uh, with the exception of Zidane, maybe. Uh, he was facing a different kind of issue, but Lightning was the same, Noxus was the same, Vaughn doesn't really count. <laughs> Titus was sort of the same, dealing with issues with his father. 
But then once they they came around, like they, there was a lot of time spent like brooding and watching them get depressed and be emo, you know. But Jack isn't like that. He's very almost Kratos-like, even more Kratos-like than even Kratos. He's got a singular mission, and even when he loses his purpose, he's still overall kind of like a really determined, like decent guy. And that's probably just what's so off-putting about his character to so many people. That compounded on top of the chaos beams that exacerbated the issue. But he's probably such a uh, a more mature kind of Final Fantasy protagonist that it throws people off. They expected him to be more like a fantasy, I suppose. His character design, everything about him is just so kind of grounded and real. But then like taken to the extreme with the memes. He's not after the girl. He's not after the money. He's not after any of that stuff. I guess you would associate with a, a more Final Fantasy protagonist. He's not after glory. You know, he's not after a career. So I feel like this game was probably undersold. Which is really weird. <laughs> like, the trailer made this game out to be kind of a joke. Or maybe that was just inadvertent by accident. But the difficulty of this game the combat was supposed to be the saving grace of it. And very surprisingly, I think, if anything, the story and the characters are the saving grace of the story. This could work, I think, as a mainline Final Fantasy story. Perhaps drawn out a little bit and maybe execute the characters a little bit better, but the plot twists have been great. Everything else has been far better than I would have ever expected. So yeah, curious to see how this turns out. They did, the director, Fujiwara, did state that this is an alt-telling, retelling of the original Final Fantasy story. And to that effect, it's been more or less consistent with the exception of we never met Master Matoya or the Elf Prince. And some things are out of order, but it's, I think it's done it, redone it for the better. The original story wasn't much of a story anyways. And so if they had to revise a couple of things, I'm, I'm fine with it. It would have been cool, though, to have the ability to traverse across the entire world. So far, it's been very, like, segmented, corridor levelly, like, chapters. Like, here's chapter one, here's chapter two. Sure, you can go back to chapter one and redo it, right? But you can't explore the world a la the original Final Fantasy I. Which makes sense, because that would have required building out a lot more. Uh, and the overworld map, I imagine, wouldn't have been all that interesting either. The one big glaring flaw of this game that I can't really yet forgive or find any redeeming quality to is the equipment system. What sucks is that your ability to survive and do damage is so hinged on equipment and RNG enemy drops, but there's no easy way to manage all that equipment. You're getting equipment like constantly after every single level to where all the time you spent grinding and getting that equipment, your affinities just right, it all goes away. You have to throw it all away and then do it all over again. Because if you use equipment that gives you better affinity, but it's like 15 or 20 levels below where you have to be, it doesn't matter. The affinity bonuses don't do anything. It doesn't negate the, the lack of stat boosts that the new equipment gives you. And so you have to do the same thing all over again. So that just feels like a very inelegant solution to maybe like a Souls issue, like where, you know, like in Souls, the, the focus was more on your equipment level and less so on learning the enemy's abilities. I don't know, to, to encourage the grinding? But the way it is designed, at a design level, just seems like very clunky. They, of course, add the smithy to allow you to alter the equipment's effects, but then it just feels like you're spinning your wheels because what's the point of grinding and getting that great gear, great affinity, just to throw it all away in the next level. I do love that the narrative of this game, how the story is now fitting in with the gameplay. There's a time loop, right? So the next game, the next, the, the new game plus, is going to justify itself with the story. And Silent Hill did that too, which was great.